Although I have not yet referred to them as such in this series, we are now on the third of the big four skills, respiration, phonation, resonance where we are now, followed by articulation in the next module. A stone medusa I found outside the Apollo temple in Didyma, Turkey will help us. Oh, and fun fact, Apollo, god of music, was the first choral conductor in Greek lore, and do you know who his first choir was? The Nine Muses. Thalia is the muse of comedy, and her main attribute is the comedy mask. When talking about resonance, we often encourage singers to resonate in the mask, or the hard surfaces in and around the nose, cheeks, and forehead. Her name also means flourishing through time, and for us, she helps our tone to flourish through space. Registration is not purely a phenomenon of resonance, but I will cover it here. Chest voice is also known as your natural voice and the register you generally use while speaking. If you place your hand on your chest and sing a low pitch like you can feel the vibration in your chest. The head voice is the light register that takes over when the chest voice gets too high. When you crack, that is when the head voice is taking over. As you can tell by her face, Medusa is accustomed to cracking. A word about nomenclature. If this lighter, higher register is clear and quite present, I call that head voice. If it is weak and breathy, I call that falsetto. I do not use those two terms interchangeably. The third register I want to cover is kind of a crossfade between head and chest. Some call it a mix. Some call it covering. The acoustics are quite complicated, but simply put, when the head and chest voice merge, formants and harmonics interact, marrying the heft of the chest and the ease of the head into a beautiful ring that can be heard most readily in operatic tenors and musical theater healthy belters, allowing them to cut through a full orchestra. In classical singing, it is fair to say that women rarely sing purely in their chest and men rarely sing purely in their head. However, particularly for choir tenors, I want you to know that the head voice can be your friend. Resonance is quite involved acoustically, but I will put it as simply as I can. In our profession, the word placement is often used in discussions of resonance. Placement is something of a misnomer, though. When you phonate, you can't very well say, okay, sound, I'm placing you over there. Rather, I like to think about it as attracting or even coaxing. Look at the diagram. The soft palate is a spongy muscle. When this muscle is engaged, you are creating another viable resonator, a hard surface, in your body. Imagine singing in a place like the Pantheon in Rome, constructed completely of hard surfaces, versus a small room with tapestries and carpeting. However, the palate is not the only resonator. Look at the diagram again. Those cavities bracketed as pharynx can also be reconfigured as resonance demands. The process is to know what kind of sound you want and to manipulate these resonators to lure the sound to come and play. Fortunately, you don't need to understand fully all of the acoustic properties. It is a journey of experimenting and feeling how to form lightning rod shapes inside the mouth and throat that amplify the tone. Each vowel and pitch combination will require a new configuration. Therefore, as you move through a song, you are constantly recalibrating. Here is an example. If she wanted to have a back resonance, Medusa might use a back vowel and would shape her resonators to attract that. If she desires a forward in the mask resonance, and she almost does in our style, then she might try a nasal consonant and a frontal vowel. Me, me, me. NG 
is also a great nasal consonant. There are also a couple of abstract images to try if you are having trouble finding that mask placement. Try imagining that your cheekbones are even higher than they are. And tipping your hat to Thalia's comedy mask, you can also think of smiling on the inside of your head, not your lips. Me. Otherwise, continue to play with the space inside the cavities in the pharynx and even coax the sound forward by wrinkling your nose. Ah. Please remember as you are experimenting with your resonators to keep your palate arched since it seals off the nasopharynx when engaged so that the sound won't ever be nasal even though you are playing with nasal consonants and frontal vowels. Speaking of vowels, all this calibration or vowel modification is the difference between speech vowels and acoustic vowels. Many popular singers use speech vowels where vowel shapes and resonators are not considerations. Classical singers always use acoustic vowels. I have worked with choirs in which the singers have not been encouraged to use acoustic vowels and the result is what you would expect, a more static and less than dynamic experience. In a classical choral and singing style, we must take the beauty of the tone and give it the boost and the amplification it needs. We create a fundamental frequency at the level of the larynx when we sing, but it's not as simple as that. As you might have learned, a fundamental pitch comes with predictable overtones that are present in the sound. Here is a pitch I sang, and then each overtone or harmonic, first an octave, then the fifth, then the next octave, the third, the fifth, the lowered seventh, etc., which is the natural progression of overtones. Be right back. In addition, vowels themselves have pitch. If you were to create a vowel shape and thump under your chin while changing the vowel shape, you will hear different pitches. Be careful not to use your voice. Therefore, you have fundamental frequencies along with their overtones and vowel shapes or modifications of the vocal tract with their own pitches. All of these interact in various ways to create little boosts in resonance. And when these pitch permutations are coordinated, the overall intonation will be better. For example, a choir that sings perfectly correct fundamental pitches, but sings haphazard and disconnected vowel shapes will sound more out of tune. (sighs) I know that is a lot. I don't tell you this to discourage you. Rather, I want to show you how rich and multidimensional your instrument is and to impress upon you that good resonance does not happen by accident. It takes a great work ethic, ethos, hmm, to imbue your singing with a beautiful forward sound that can reach a listener with relative ease even if she is in the very back of the hall. And incidentally, when I'm working on singing in the mask, A welcome side effect is that my eyebrows are always arched, reinforcing, I believe, a subconsciously open and positive attitude to the process and lending an expression that will inspire my audience as well. 